AAMG. Your choice, your health, our mission. Hello everyone. Today in this video, I'll be walking you through step-by-step -step on how to fill out an advanced healthcare directive form. An advanced healthcare directive form lets you have a say about how you want to be treated if you get very sick. To learn more about what an advanced directive is, please refer to our previous video, The Importance of an Advanced Directive. On this first page of the form, this explains the three different parts of the advanced healthcare directive. Part one is choose a medical decision maker. Part two is make your own healthcare choices. Part three is sign the form. Please note that you may fill out only the parts of the form that you want and feel comfortable with, either part one, part two, or both part one and two. Remember, this advanced healthcare directive form is only valid if part three is signed by you. There also needs to be two witnesses who sign the form with you or a notary public. On the second page, it mentions the following. If you only want to name a medical decision maker, go to part one on page three. If you only want to make your own health care choices, go to part two on page six. If you want to name a medical decision maker and to make your own health care choices, then fill out both part one and part two. Always remember to sign the form in part three on page nine. Two witnesses are required to sign on page 11 or a notary public on page 12. On the second half of this page, it goes over some frequently asked questions. If you change your mind about anything, please fill out a new form. Tell those who care for you about your changes. Remember to give the new form to your medical decision maker and doctor. If you have any questions about the form, you may ask your doctor, nurses, social workers, friends, or family for the advice. A lawyer may also be helpful. If you want to make healthcare choices that are not listed in the form, you can write down your choices on the blank lines available on page 9. Most importantly, share this form and your choices with your family, friends, and team of medical providers. Page 3 and the following few pages cover part 1 of the Advanced Healthcare Directive form, Choose Your Medical Decision Maker. Your medical decision maker is the person who can make healthcare choices for you if you're too sick to make them for yourself. The first question here states, whom should I choose to be my medical decision maker? This goes over the criteria and qualifications for a person to become your medical decision maker. This person can be a family member or a friend who is at least 18 years old, knows you well, can be there for you when you need them, someone you trust to do what is best for you, and can tell your doctors about the decisions you made. It is important to note that your medical decision maker cannot be your doctor or someone who works at the hospital or clinic unless this person is a family member. The second question here is, what will happen if I do not choose a medical decision maker? If this happens and you're too sick to make your own decisions, your doctors will turn to your family members or your friends to make the decisions for you. This is not in your best interest because this person may not know what you want. The third question goes over, what kind of decisions can my medical decision maker make? He or she can agree to, say no to, change, stop or choose your doctors, nurses, social workers, which hospitals or clinics you're treated at, or where you live, your medications, tests or treatments, and also what happens to your body and organs after you die. Page 4 is other decisions your medical decision maker can make. Your medical decision maker can decide on what life support treatments you are to undergo to try to help you live longer. These include CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation, a breathing machine or a ventilator, dialysis, feeding tube, blood transfusions, surgery, and medications. He or she can also decide on your end of life care. This can be calling in a spiritual leader, deciding if you die at home or in a hospital, and or deciding where you should be buried. Be sure to tell your medical decision maker clearly on what kind of medical care you want. Page 5 is naming who your medical decision maker is. The form asks you to name a person and a turn a person. Fill in their basic contact information with their name, relationship to you, their address, and their phone number. Next is putting an X next to the statement you most agree with. Mark either, my medical decision maker can make decisions for me right after I sign this form, or my medical decision maker will make decisions for me only after I cannot make my own decisions. 
Below, it allows you to choose the flexibility on how do you want your medical decision maker to follow your healthcare wishes. Put an X next to one sentence, either total flexibility, some flexibility, or no flexibility. Total flexibility. It is okay for my decision maker to change any of my medical decisions if my doctors think it is best for me at that time. Some flexibility. It is okay for my decision maker to change some of my decisions if the doctors think it is best. But these are some wishes I never want changed. No flexibility. I want my decision maker to follow my medical wishes exactly, no matter what. It is not okay to change my decisions even if the doctors recommend it. Part 1 of the form in choosing a medical decision maker ends here. If you wish to make your own healthcare choices, go to part 2 on the next page. If you do not wish to make your own healthcare choices, please remember to sign a form in part 3 on page 9. Page 6 begins part 2 of the Advanced Healthcare Directive. Make your own healthcare choices. This is important because you should write down your choices so those who care for you will know what you want and will not need to guess. These next few pages ask you to spend some time to reflect and think about what makes your life worth living. The first statement given is, my life is only worth living if I can. Here you should mark an X next to all the sentences you most agree with. The second statement asks you, if I am dying, it is important for me to be marked either at home, in a hospital, or I am not sure. The third statement asks, is religion or spirituality important to you? This is a yes or no question. If yes, fill in what is your religion. Lastly, the following question is a follow-up asking you what should your doctors know about your religious or spiritual beliefs. Note that if you are sick, your doctors and nurses will always try to keep you comfortable and free from pain. Page 7 asks you to make your choice on life support treatments. These type of treatments are used to try to keep you alive and may include CPR, a brain machine, beating tubes, dialysis, blood transfusions, or medicine. Mark an X next to one statement you most agree with. If I'm so sick that I may die soon, either one, try all life support treatments that my doctors think might help. If the treatments do not work and there is little hope of getting better, I want to stay on life support treatments even if I'm suffering. 2. Try all life support treatments that my doctors think might help. If the treatments do not work and there is little hope of getting better, I do not want to stay on life support machines. If I'm suffering, I want to stop. 3. I do not want life support treatments. I want to focus on being comfortable. I prefer to have a natural death. 4. I want my medical decision maker to decide for me. 5. I am not sure. If you want to write down medical wishes that are not on this form, please go to page 9. Page 8, it is asking about organ donation and autopsy after you die. Donating your organs can help save lives, while an autopsy can be done after death to find out why someone died. It is done by surgery and can take a few days. Mark an X next to one choice you most agree with for your wishes regarding organ donation and an autopsy. You may also write down your answer to the question, what should your doctors know about how you want your body to be treated after you die? Do you have funeral or burial wishes? Page 9 is the end of part 2, make your own healthcare choices. Here you may write down other wishes important to you not mentioned before on the lines below provided. This page also contains the last and most important part of the advanced healthcare directive form. Part 3, sign the form. Before this form can be used, you must sign the form if you're at least 18 years old, have two witnesses sign the form, or a notary public. In the blank space provided, sign the form, date it, print your first and last name, and also fill in your address. Page 10, this explains the requirements of who your witnesses can be. To qualify to be your witness, your witnesses must be over 18 years old of age, know you, see you sign this form. Your witnesses cannot be your medical decision maker, be your healthcare provider, work for your healthcare provider, or work at the place that you live. If you live in a nursing home, go to page 12. Also, one witness cannot be related to you in any way, benefit financially, such as getting any money or property after you die. 
if you do not have witnesses a notary public must sign on page 12 a notary public's job is to make sure it is you signing the form if you do have two witnesses have them sign on the following page if you do not have witnesses take this form to a notary public and have them sign on page 12. page 11 is have your witnesses sign their names and write the date please have them fill in the blanks with their signature the date first and last name, and also their address. Page 12 is for a notary public. Take this form to a notary public only if two witnesses have not signed this form with you. You will need to bring valid identification such as your driver's license or passport. Note that a notary public may require a small fee. There are many places around the city where you can get a notary public such as a UPS store and various other locations. If you live in a nursing home, give this form to your nursing home director. California law requires nursing home residents to have their nursing home ombudsman as a witness of advanced directive. Have this person complete the statement of the patient advocate or ombudsman. Now lastly, let's talk about life changes and updating your care plan. Document your wishes in your advanced directive as they stand today. Review and update your care plan when you have life and health status changes. Remember. This can be updated at any time. Thank you everyone for listening to this presentation. Uh, be sure to share this forum with your family, friends, and medical providers. Talk with them about your medical wishes. Any questions? Feel free to email us at health.education at aamgdoctors.com. Kindly please visit the AAMG website and follow us on social media for the latest news and upcoming events. We are also on all the major platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For more information on other health topics, please visit the AAMG Health Education website. If you like this video, please give a like and subscribe to our channel for more related content.